So today we had the big Google I.O. event. There's a normal keynote announcing all the big projects they've been working on. There was a developer specific keynote which covered all things happening within their developer products. And then there was also separate sections for each specific product. We'll go over all the main keynotes and then we'll cover the Flutter keynote a little bit more in depth because that's the one I'm the most invested in. Before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Bitrise, but a little bit more on that later. Now I, now I live streamed this event and I was supposed to start at 12 my time but then I turned my corner and I just heard some sort of bangers going on in the background. So they had some live music before the keynote actually started. And then we had the actual event starting. So this is what it opened up with, this beautiful image of the IO in some sort of jungle. And there was so much stuff announced that I'm just gonna have to rapid fire through a lot of it. So first, Google Translate added 24 new languages. Within Google Maps, we now are able to see within the actual restaurant as well as they improved a lot of the physical like satellite imaging so you could see more and more of the buildings. This one was one of my favorite. It could now summarize some of your Google Docs and, and give you this little summary link over here. So instead of having to read through the whole Google Doc, you could just read the summary real quick and be caught up right before a meeting. Another thing that I think might be more useful than the Google Doc summary, because I kind of feel bad if someone typed out a lot in the Google Doc, you just read a summary and move on, I feel kind of bad. But being able to catch up with conversations within group chats, Google's AI can provide a nice conversation summary for you. It showed off a lot of cool AI and machine learning tech that improves your Google Meets calls. You can see the before and after of a person with some bad lighting, how Google AI can improve that a lot. It can adjust skin tones and this little slider that they're showing, the slider you can move it across and see shadows from a different standpoint. So this is what you use in professional photo editing softwares, but this will be within actual Google Meets. So that's that was a little showcase how you can drag it across and see the difference. Multi-search, so apparently this was released before Google I.O., but I haven't heard of it. It allows you to Google search stuff using multiple inputs. So for example, you could take a picture of something, search with that, and then add on another search on top of it. They had this example of had this example where he took a picture of the hose that he needs and he searched for the replacement hose for this thing. And the next piece was the multi-search near me. So after you find that little search result, you could type in near me and it'll find these things that you need that are close to you. So for in, in this example, he needed a replacement for the hose. And if you typed in near me, you'll find the close locations where he could actually find that replacement. This part was nuts. So this was a feature within Google Lens where you're basically able to point that camera and the camera will take in inputs and give you information about that. The example they gave is, let's say you're going to a chocolate factory, you're able to show what kind of chocolate options there are. Type in specific chocolates that you want. For example, highly rated dark chocolate, and I'll give you the results overlaid onto the actual chocolate bars right for you. That's pretty crazy, but the implications of that worry me a little bit, like what's gonna happen to packaging industry, the SEO related to that is, hopefully I'm overthinking it, and it's actually just gonna be a great feature. Like in this example, you can search for scent-free moisturizers and just point the camera and find exactly what you need. And they brought it up, it's like a control F for the actual world. Now they added two more ways to initiate your Nest devices. So instead of saying, hey Google, I hope I set off some of your devices. But instead of saying that phrase, you can now just look at the actual device and just start talking directly to it. The way they showed it, it's like you have to really look at a device. And for me, saying the phrase sounds more useful, but hey, why not? This one was the one that I'd be more excited about. It's quick phrases, which allows you to say specific things that it already recognizes. For example, make a call to X and Y. You'll notice that it says make a call and you won't even have to say the keyword phrase at the beginning. They announced this new AI test kitchen where there's all these new features that Google's releasing. You can go into this test kitchen and try them out. They named a couple of them, but the most interesting one was this list it. So it should allow you using machine learning to break down a complex goal and turn it into step-by-step -step solutions in order to get there. I can't wait to get access to this so I could ask you how to get to 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Maybe it'll teach me. Palm was their next iteration of machine learning models. So this one has 540 billion parameters. I don't really know what that means, but it seems like a lot. And this will allow you to do things like chain of thought prompting, where it'll give you answers and tell you the actual process and the reasoning for why it thought this was the right answer. They also talked a lot about privacy and safety. They do it with emails, apps, and websites, but they expanded all those features on websites and emails over to the Google Workspace equipment. So there are Google Sheets, Google Docs, will also have protection against phishing. They upgraded two-step verification where now you don't actually have to type in a number where you can just click confirm on your phone and it should be faster and less annoying now. And by the way, it's on by default. It's all working towards their future of not having passwords. Hey, it talked about a Google search feature where you can 
where you can request Google to take down results about you that you don't like. And if I remember correctly, for most of the rest of this, it's gonna be catching up to what Apple's already been doing. And one of those things is Google Wallet. So now here you could bring your cards and everything in there, but not just that, you can see your flight information, add your driver's license, and pretty much catching up to what the Apple Wallet can do. And then you talked about Wear OS. And then you talked about Wear OS, which was a big foreshadowing to what was to come later. They said a lot more devices started using Wear OS last year. And they also brought up that they're adding support for a lot of tablets here. And it showed off cool ways how Android is getting updated so you can multitask on your tablets. And if you've had an iPhone, you've probably seen this feature before where there's smart devices that just pop up and you're able to add them directly to your little system. On well, Android has that now as well. And a little shout out to my boy Danny and Lando. They got featured in the Google I.O. event testing some of the devices. That was pretty cool to see. I'm a big F1 fan. And now all the gadget announcements started getting laid out. So first we got the Google Pixel 6a for a pretty reasonable price from what I could tell. It's has the same powerful Google chip, so it has the same speed and all the machine learning stuff that the pro models have. And they showed a little demo where they were able to remove someone from the background, which is one of the coolest features, I think. But then they added another thing where they changed this cooler from a lime green to a brown. So now within your photos, you can not only remove people, but apparently change colors now as well. There's something new that I haven't seen before. And then they teased the Pixel 7. So this is what the Pixel 7 will look like in the future, but of course it's not coming for a little while still. And they announced the Google Pixel Buds Pro. So they have noise canceling, transparency mode, but they had a special little thing where they have these arrows coming around because apparently headphones don't create a very good seal all the time. So this adds extra noise cancellation for your headphones. It has spatial audio as well, which is pretty cool. And you're able to find it whenever you lost it using find your device. And this was the big announcement. So the Google Pixel Watch, so this is the first time that Google will be making a watch. Even though I don't really use Google devices, I think that one looks fantastic. Hopefully it works well. Here's another look at it. It looks very clean and minimalistic. It's, it's definitely something I would wear. A little, here's another one. And it's coming this fall with the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. Another big announcement was that they're making a tablet as well. This one's coming a little bit later. So now they'll have a whole lineup of devices to compete directly with all the other manufacturers. This I think was the most hype part of the whole presentation. So it was some experimental glasses that translate speech to you right in front of your eyes. So see this guy put on some glasses here and he'll be able to see the translation of what's going on right within his field of view. That hopefully means that the AR Google glasses are coming back and hopefully they'll be a lot better than the first iteration. I'm excited. Even if it's just for this use case, that'd be so cool to see to be able to walk around in different countries and understand what people are saying. So that was the main release keynote. Then we went on to the developer keynote. So first we got Jetpack Compose for Wear OS. Since they're releasing their watch, people need to be able to actually build apps and stuff for that watch. And if you're an Android developer, they announced Jetpack Compose 1.2 beta. You'll have some downloadable fonts, nested scrolling, lazy layouts, text magnifiers, and of course, much more. And last year, they announced a new standard for Google Chrome of how to track performance. And they said that performance has improved a lot over sites and has given a lot of people better, better and faster experiences on the web. Now we're gonna have a little performance insights tab where you could dig deep into what the actual problems are and what's going on. A little sneak peek for my next video, they talked about WebAssembly, which is what I'm currently working on. And a similar problem that WebAssembly is trying to solve, they talked about Interop 2022, which is an agreement between all the different web browsers that they're gonna standardize like 15 of the most important things that are used within websites. So things like forms, dialog, scrolling, all that type of stuff will hopefully become more and more standard between the different browsers because it's kind of all over the place at the moment. Before we get to the Flutter portion, I want to say a big thank you to Bitrise who are kindly sponsoring this video. Bitrise is a mobile CICD tool. And if you don't know what CICD is, basically automates the process of getting your applications from code all the way to the app stores. So Bitrise is mobile first. They allow you to store your code basically anywhere that most people store their code online. You don't need any hardware because all this happens on the cloud. So all your builds and everything like that can happen while you sleep. They not only are for Flutter, but for pretty much any mobile platform. Of course, as you customize your pipeline and your workflow to fit whatever needs you have. You can see the exact machine it ran on and then get a nice workflow of exactly what happened during your build. It was actually really cool. I went through the setup and it auto detected what language my code was in and added this Flutter installer by itself. So you can set up a whole pipeline workflow relatively quickly and you could build and deploy applications without having to do it manually. Thank you again to Bitrise for sponsoring this video. And now let's get to the Flutter announcements. So they announced that there's over 500,000 apps that were built with Flutter, which is a huge number. And the big announcement was the release of Flutter 3.0. 
the next big iteration of Flutter. The big reason this move to 3.0 is I think because macOS and Linux are officially stable. So now there's all six platforms that are stable using Flutter and it should be relatively comfortable building apps for any of those platforms. Another big highlight was that Firebase is finally fully supported for Flutter. That means Firebase is going to have Flutter specific documentation, will allow you to set up specific Flutter projects within the Firebase console, as well as Crash Linux will now give you Flutter specific details about what's happening within your application. And some more little things announced was Flutter will give you a way to add your own custom splash screens. They made image decoding a lot faster on the web. So now your website should be faster if you're using Flutter web. And lastly, it's set up like a little environment to help you learn how to develop games with Flutter and kind of make it easier and more efficient to make high quality games using your Flutter applications. So that was the Google I.O. It was definitely hype like every year. My goal is to dive into a little bit more of all of those technologies and cover them on this channel. So if you want to learn more about machine learning, AI, and all the things that I couldn't really cover because I didn't understand them, make sure to subscribe. I'm excited to try out Flutter 3.0. But those are the main highlights for this year. And thank you for watching.